Welcome inside our large full-scale test chamber today. We get to bring you inside some of the science we're doing here focusing on wildfire today. Absolutely, so this facility is very unique. It's the only place like it in the world where we have the capability to reproduce Mother Nature's hazards in a controlled, repeatable manner. So that's part of what we're gonna be looking at today, right? We're looking at how flames could cross a fuel break. Yes, so basically we have two uh, fuel beds here. One of them is the source, the, one, the other one is the target. Mm -hmm. And we add the wind component again to this. And we want to look what should be the, the, the width of the gap that the fire doesn't bridge over. And this can be used uh, in real world as uh, Dan mentioned in the video. Give our viewers a sense of what we're looking for them to walk away with here today. So what we're going to see in this first test is we're going to see a line fire started at the leading edge. Um, we have about a 20 mile per hour wind and that fire is going to spread through what we call our source fuel bed. It's about 40 feet long, 12 feet wide. We're going to see fire spread that 40 feet in under 10 seconds. I'd estimate maybe eight to nine seconds. And then it's going to reach a gap. And that gap currently is at just under four feet, about three feet, 11 inches, or in metric terms, 120 centimeters. And what we expect to see in this first experiment is that fire to bridge. We're gonna see the fire, the flames licking across the gap and to ignite the target source. And so in this 120 centimeter gap, we expect the fire to spread. In the second test, we're gonna increase that gap size and we're gonna see what happens then. Are we ready for the first test? We're ready to go, I'm gonna get started here. I'm going to let you go and I will backpedal here and get out of the way so you folks can see everything that's going to take place. We are starting a fire now and off we go. As you heard Dan mention, moving across that source fuel bed, Dan said in around 10 seconds or so, timing is everything when it comes to science. As you can see, that fire is quickly moving across that source fuel bed. Those pine straws are feeling it right now. That fire is pretty much uh, consuming that source fuel bed, those pine straws. And now we're looking at Willith's Bridge. We're expecting it to. It is coming across that fuel break. And there you have it. We've got the flames on the other side from the source fuel bed to the target fuel bed. We got a thumbs up from Dan Gorham there. And uh, the crew now will start to prepare for test number two. Let me come back on camera here and just talk to you folks for just a moment. So there you see it. We got what we were hoping for with the first test. Got a couple of thumbs up from Dan Gorham. Uh, three feet, 11 inches is the gap for the first test. Four feet, three inches is the gap for test number two. We are ready for that second test. Dan is standing right by me. Dan, give us a quick preview. Yeah, so the difference between test one and test two, which we're about to start right here is 10 centimeters, so just about four inches. And so that source, or pardon me, that target is just four centimeters further away. And we're gonna see whether or not that four inches is enough that the fire doesn't spread the gap. We're about ready to get started. Let's go, here we go. All right, I will get out of the way here. And here we go. Source fuel bed now being consumed by these flames. We will see if that bridge that you've heard Faraz and Dan mentioned, we will see if we get the bridge that we're looking for. Now coming up on the uh, fuel brake itself on the gravel. And now hopping across to that target fuel bed. So we see fire impact, not just on the source fuel bed. We also see it on the target fuel bed as well. There you have it. We were a bit uncertain what we would see with this second test, but yeah, the fire is licking up much of the fuel on uh, that target fuel bed. As those pine straws feel the weight of that fire and the 20 mile per hour wind speed. An incredible day for us here at IBHS. We are proud to have brought you a live look inside our research as it happened. We hope you learned a little something and enjoyed seeing science at work in the everyday world.